This is Official Nerd Business. Hello, nerd boys and girls. Um, let's look at primes for a second. Um, this will be a pure math video. Um, we, uh, we're, we're working on Euler problem number three, and Euler problem number three involves primes, and there's a couple of things I want to uh, tell you about primes, show you about primes. It's probably things um, you will already know, at least for a bit, um, but let's see what we can um, create as a base piece of knowledge where we will uh, base our code on. Um, so let's dive into primes. Uh, I want to discuss a couple of things. What is a prime? How can we test if a number is prime? What are prime factors? And how do we get prime factors? So that's on the menu for today. Let's uh, go ahead and see what is a prime. Any number divisible by 1 and by itself only. 0 is not a prime. 1 is not a prime. Although 1 itself does comply to this rule. It's divisible by 1 obviously. And it is divisible by itself as it is 1 itself but it's not considered prime by mathematicians. Then 2 is the only even prime, uh, because every other even number can be divided by 2, and therefore is not prime, 2 itself is. 3 is prime, as it cannot be divided by 2, can only be divided by 1 and by itself. 4 is not a prime, as we said before, it's even, so it obviously has a 2 in its... Uh, it can obviously be divided by 2, and therefore is not prime. 5 is a prime, 7 is a prime, 9, uh, you might think all the odd numbers are primes. Well, 9 is not prime as it can be divided by 3. And with divisible we mean integer division, so um, if there's a result it has to be an integer and not a decimal. We could say that uh, 5 is divisible by 2 and it leaves 2.5, um, but that's not a valid way of looking at it as we're looking at whole numbers. 5 is prime because we cannot find any number dividing 5 and leaving a whole number. 6 is not prime because 6 can be divided by 2, leaving a whole number 3. How do we know if n is prime? Well, we don't have a formula that, that gives us a 1 or a 0 when we plug in uh, number n. We need to test every number to see if it is divided by any other number. Um, one approach, one very naive approach, might be trial division, where we take all the numbers between 1 and n exclusive, so that means 2 up to n minus 1. Uh, we take that list, uh, we take a number of that list, the smallest number m, uh, we see if uh, we get a quotient q when we divide n by m, is q a whole number, then n is not prime, because we found a whole number that divide, divides it. And if we didn't, we take the next m and we run through that list on, in that way. And if we did not find any numbers that cleanly divide n, then n must be a prime. Now we're going to look at prime factors in a little bit. Let's look at ordinary factors first. Uh, factors are any number that divide n without leaving a remainder again. Um, so 12 can be divided by 1, by 2, and by 3, by 4, by 6, and by 12 itself. Those are its it's ordinary factors. Uh, we'll look at prime factors in a second. Um, and we've also named the prime numbers, namely they are prime. Uh, let's give the other numbers uh, a name too, and that name is composite numbers. And as the name implies, it is composed out of the numerical atoms that are our primes. You will see why that is a... Uh, you will see how that fits in when we look at prime factors. So prime factors. Let's look at, um, at let's look, let's look at six prime factors of n that are prime. So six can be divided by one, by two, by three, and by six. And two and three are prime. So the prime factors for six are two and three, and every composite number is composed of primes and, and with that we mean when you take those prime factors and you multiply each by each number in that list you get the number n back again so if you look at 6 its prime factors are 2 and 3 we multiply 2 by 3 and we get 6 again every number has a prime factorization 
and that specific prime factorization will only lead back to that number. There are there is no other way which you can multiply primes to get six, and there is no other number that you will get by multiplying two and three. Some examples two and two give you four. Um, note that this example um, the same prime appears multiple times in the prime factorization. Um, that's no problem. In, in regular factors we just say oh, 2 is a factor. Uh, for prime factorization it matters how often a number can be put into another number for, for its prime factorization. So we can have the same prime multiple times in the factorization and 2 and 2 lead to 4. Um, if we manipulate that list of primes, so say for instance we add another 2, we get another number. Each unique set of numbers so not only the numbers themselves, or the primes themselves are unique, but also the number of, they, uh, of times they appear on the list. Each unique set of primes in the factorization leads to a unique number. And stating the obvious, we can only get odd numbers without 2 in the factorization. If we put a 2 in there, we automatically get an even number. And if we don't, we stay in the realm of odd numbers. Now, having taken a small look at prime factorization, um, let's use the, the knowledge of prime factorization with testing if a number is prime. Because we uh, did the trial division, taking all the numbers between, uh, say we, we pick 10, we take all the numbers between uh, including 2 and 9, that's quite a list, and we can do a lot better. We can use uh, we can reduce that list, we can reduce the upper limit on that list to the root of n. Because any number n can have only one prime factor bigger than its own root, and when it does, it also needs to have a smaller prime factor. Uh, why? Any composite number has at least two prime factors. It might have more, it cannot have less. If it has only one prime factor, it, it is itself prime. Because a prime factorization shows us that we need to multiply at least two items to get a composite number. Um, and if we, um, if we take a look at 25, for example, and the root of 25 is a 5. And the root times the root is, in fact, the root squared. And squaring something is the opposite of taking the root. So if we take 25, it's root, and we square that, we get back 25. Now let's take a hypothetical look at when we multiply two numbers that are bigger than the root. Say we have an x and a y uh, which are 6 and 7, or 5 and 6 will do if, if one is the root and the other one is bigger, but say they're both bigger, it, it doesn't really matter. Then the multiplication of x and y will always be bigger than the multiplication of root n and root n. Any multiplication of two numbers larger than root n will be bigger than n itself. Note that n can have one factor that is bigger than its root, but no more than one, because then we would be multiplying uh, the x and the y from our example, and we would end up above n. So 26, for example, is a number that has a uh, prime factor bigger than its root. The uh, root here is 5 point a little bit. And it has 13 as a prime factor, but it also has a smaller prime factor. So if we test for primality, we know that 26 is not a prime, because when we look at all the numbers between 1 and the root of 26, we will find 2. We will find a number smaller than the root that is a prime factor. How can we systematically look for prime factors of a given number? Well, we've determined... Uh, a limit to where we can uh, look at primes. Let's look at finding all prime factors of a number. Um, first step is to determine the limit. Uh, I've chosen the letter L to denote this. Um, and as you can see, there's a seal function around taking the root. That's just um, that just basically says go to the next integer bigger than the root we find. Um, that's a bit of a failsafe. For edge cases, we'll get to that when we start programming. Um, 
make a list of all the primes smaller than L. The list is called uh, P with the square brackets here. And create an empty list of uh, prime factors of N, which is also denoted by square brackets. Uh, take the first smallest prime of that list of primes and see if it divides n. If n is divided, then we change the value of n to the quotient, so to the um, to how many times our prime fit into n. And we also add the prime that we used to the list of prime factors. If px does not divide n, then we change the value of px to the next smallest prime uh, available in the list of p. So if we were testing 2 and it doesn't divide, then we skip to 3. Uh, and then if whatever we have left is 1, then we're done dividing. So all the prime factors were smaller than its root, and we have now all the primes we need to build this number, so we can stop. Fn, the list of prime factors, is now complete. If we do not have any primes left to test, but we still have a quotient bigger than 1, then that quotient itself is a prime. It's the only prime factor bigger than root of n. n can have no other factors. And we know that the quotient is a prime because if it is not a prime, it would have been divided itself by any primes we've tested before this point. So whatever we have left is a prime and is a prime factor of n, so add our remain here to the list of factors and we're done again. And if we still have a remainder and we still have primes left to test, then go to the next prime and repeat this test. So let's look at an example. Let's say we want to see the prime factors of 12. The root of 12 is 3 point a little bit. Um, and if we seal that, if we go to the next whole integer, then we get a 4. All primes smaller than 4 are the numbers 2 and 3. First prime we want to test is 2. 12 is divided by 2 leaves us a quotient of 6. So we set n to our quotient 6 and we add to our list of primes, prime factors specifically. Uh, we test 2 again. Um, since 2 is a factor of 12, but we haven't seen if 2 is also a factor of 6, we want to test 2 again. We only change the value of the prime we're testing if the previous test uh, showed that this prime does not divide whatever we're testing. So 6 is again divided by uh, 2, so we add another 2 to our list of prime factors and we once again set n to the quotient 3. 3 is not divided by 2, it leaves 1.5 and, um, and we are looking at whole numbers here, so um, we do not add anything to our list of prime factors, but we do change the value of the primer testing. We skip to the next prime on the list. We still have primes on the list, so that's good. So now we have 3. Px is 3. 3 divides 3, leaves 1. Our remainder is 1. Uh, we did divide, so the three divides 3, therefore 3 needs to go on our list of prime factors, and since the remainder the, or the quotient now is 1, we can stop. If we look at the list of prime factors and multiply each number, 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12, so that checks out. n is 14. Our limit is still 4, so the primes we want to test are still 2 and 3. 14 is divisible by 2 leaves a 7, so 2 is a prime factor, it's added to the list, and the quotient is set to 7. 7 cannot be divided by 2, so we skip to 3. 7 can also not be divided by 3. And since we no longer have primes on our list, but we do have a remainder, that remainder is prime. So we add the remainder to the list, we stop testing. Our list is now complete because the 2 we found earlier and the 7 that was remaining together make 14 again. Then let's look at 13. Our root is 4, our primes are 2 and 3. And 13 cannot be divided by 2, so we go to 3. 13 cannot be divided by 3, so whatever remains is prime, and since uh, we found 
no prime factors, 13 itself must be prime. So there's a bit of a um, basic uh, knowledge about primes and about testing primes. How we use this knowledge in our uh, code for solving Euler problem 3 we will see in another video. Thanks for watching this video on official nerd business. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon. Did we discuss everything you wanted to hear or did we miss anything? Any topics you want to hear in O&B? Leave your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.